Uh, with that said, we are going to get going. Um, I have been spending quite a bit of time with the Lord recently, uh, really on, on a very simple idea, um, which is what does the Lord require of me in this season? And the more I've kind of gone with him, I was, I was going to say dove, but it just did not sound right coming out of my mouth. The more I've See, it's not coming out right. <laughs> the more I've gone with him into that idea, the more that I've found there is such an amount of peace when the Lord calls you to obedience, when the question you're asking is, what do you require of me, Lord? Not, God, how can I get my way, Lord, what do you require of me? And as I've been praying through that question, what's, what's interesting is God has consistently given me the same message. And I don't know if you're this way. I tend to be with the Lord. If, if I get exactly the answer I'm hoping for, I'm kind of like, is this actually the answer or is this just me? And I, I'm always quick to doubt what the Lord has said when those things start to, to come into my mind. And, and what I've found specifically in this season with the Lord and what me and Taylor have been talking about and praying through is, man, we really feel like God wants to do some really incredible things through us and and through the church. And really, in, in this season, we feel like the Lord is starting to open some doors that we felt had previously been closed. And so for the next just couple of minutes, I'm going to talk to you about that, about some vision I have for the church, and then about a very simple idea, which is what if we acted as though God was actually going to be true to his word? With those things in mind, I'm going to pray and then we'll get into it. God, thank you so much for this day. God, I pray right now that you would speak individually to every one of us. God, that we would know that your promises are yes and it will be done. And so God, right now, I pray every single one of us would hear from you in your mighty name. Amen. Okay. So first, I want to start with the story of the Good Samaritan. It's, it's what this church was founded on. And as we were in worship, listening to the, the miracle song, God just so reminded me of really who our benefactor is. And in the story of the Good Samaritan, you have both a priest and a Levite. So the, the, the two embodiments of uh, really what God was supposed to be in a man. And so priests, they're the ones who do the yearly rituals. They're they're the ones who go before God into the, into the temple, into the Holy of Holies. They make atonement for the people. And, and Levites, who are they? They're, they're the uh, tribe of Israel specifically chosen to minister before the Lord, to continually from generation to generation. They, they don't even have an inheritance. Their inheritance, the Bible says, is the Lord. The land that they dwell in was given not to the tribe of Levi, but to the tribe who served the Lord, which was Levi. And the distinction is important because their entire role was to serve the Lord. And, and so you have a priest, and then you have a chosen people who find themselves walking by a man left in a ditch. And you see, this man was on his way from Jerusalem to Jericho and as Jesus tells the story, we need, we need to understand a little bit of the context. I've, I've said this before, but I, th I don't think at, at a quick glance we understand the vehement hatred associated with the word Samaritan. Because the Samaritan is the third man who comes by. And for, for reference to today, it would be as if, it would be as if a, a, a member of Hamas went walking by and saw a Jewish man in a ditch. That did not sound good. Uh -oh. Tay's got it. We're going to keep going. <laughs> it would be as if a, 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 a member of Hamas walked by and saw a Jewish man in a ditch. And, and I'm not just saying like a Muslim in belief. I'm talking about someone who you actually can say they hate me and want me to die. Like, this is the context when you hear the word Samaritan. So, so from the top of the story, you have a Pharisee coming to Jesus. And, and he says, what are the greatest commandments? And Jesus is like, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart and, and love your neighbor as yourself. And then the Pharisee replies to Jesus. And what does he say? 
who is my neighbor? And Jesus, as he constantly does in his ministry, he answers with a story. And in that story, he unfolds, he says, there was a certain man on his way from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and on his way, a band of robbers seized him and robbed him and beat him and left him half dead in a ditch. And a priest walked by, and he went to the other side of the road. And, and then a Levite, he, he walked by, and he went to the other side of the road. But then a certain Samaritan, seeing the man, picked him up. He bandaged his, wound, his wounds. He, he put him on his own animal. It was actually a donkey that he had. He put him on his own donkey, and he took him to an inn. And when he arrived at the inn, he paid the keeper, and he said, take care of this man. And he said, and, and whatever else is left, whatever other bills that this man runs up, I'll settle when I come back. And so often as, as the church, we, we look at that, 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 and we go, oh man, we're supposed to be the good Samaritan. And it's like, well, maybe. But this church was founded on the idea that Jesus is the only real good Samaritan. And that as a church, we are supposed to be the inn. The inn that says, whoever Jesus brings, we're going to love them. And we're going to believe that their benefactor is Jesus. Okay, what that means is, when you act in obedience, even though the money hasn't arrived yet, you believe that the benefactor is faithful to return and reward you. And so when I talk today about obedience, when, when, when I talk today about, okay, let's, let's act as though God has already showed up, as though he, he has already given us what we need, I, I want to be clear, this is a daily walk for me and Taylor. It, it, it's a daily walk that, that really I think God is calling us all to a higher level in. And so if he's giving you a word, my next question would be, what's stopping you from obeying? Because if he said he's going to do something, he's going to do it. And so are we struggling with the I don't hear God situation or are we struggling with the I'm not willing to obey God situation? And I think more often we're struggling with that I'm not willing to obey. Because I don't feel like you've told me what provision looks like yet. You've told me what I need to do, but, but you haven't told me what provision looks like yet. But from the story of the Good Samaritan, we can see he's saying, oh, no, just take care of what I've given you. I'm going to return. And I'm going to reward you. That, that's another principle I think we get really uncomfortable with when it comes to Lord. We're afraid to think of God will reward me. And it's the most ridiculous thing to me. Because God wants to reward us. But for some reason, especially when you grow up in the church, you, you get this false sense of humility where it's like, man, I, I, Jesus doesn't owe me anything. And it's like, no, <laughs> Jesus doesn't owe you anything, but he wants to bless you. He wants to reward you. He wants to honor your faithfulness. And so if I could encourage you for just a minute, if you would obey God, believing that he will do what he said he's going to do, he will not just repay you, he will reward you. And there's a big difference there. Repaying you is just covering what you've already spent. Rewarding you is raising you up because of your faithfulness. And for us today, I believe that God is calling us to a place of being obedient, believing in reward. Because that's the kind of God that we serve. And, and people so often are like, I just need to, to obey and obey. And yes, and know that you serve a God who desires to honor that and reward that. And so often we, we read the Bible in a negative light. One verse that can't, comes to mind is, you know, what's done in secret will, 
will be spoken from the rooftops. We've probably all heard that before. Most of the time we take that in a negative light. We're like, man, if I'm sinning in secret, probably going to be exposed. But, but what if we took that on the positive side? Man, what I serve in secret, God will reward openly. If I will serve quietly, if I will not look for a reward, if I won't look to raise myself up, God will reward me. I've been, I've been struggling with this because at, uh, my, my job recently, there's, there's been some things stirring in me that I'm, I'm looking at where I spend the majority of my time and I'm looking at what I know God has called me to and the two of those things, I don't feel like they match up. And I'm struggling because I'm going, God, I need the money, though. And so how do these two things fit together? And for just a minute, I, I want to talk a little bit about those two things. You see, because I, I think every single one of us spends the majority of our life uh, in a tran or not transition. Uh, let, let's call it a, a waiting for the promised land state. And whether or not that's God putting us there or us just living from that place, I think most of us do live from that place. There are times where you're waiting for the promise, and there's other times God's put you in a promise, and you're looking for a different one. And you're going, oh, well, I want this promise. And he's like, okay, but, but, but I have this promise today. And we're like, man, this is a wilderness season. And God's like, it's actually not. This is just a different promise promise. And so today I, I, I want us to take courage in, in this very, very simple idea that not only does God want to bring about the promises in your life, not only does God want to reward you, but God is not keeping you in a desert season. Like God is not forcing you to stay there. It is only you that decides the length of your desert season. And I know that can be frustrating because there are times where we're like, man, I'm obeying, I'm doing everything I know to do, and, and I'm still in this season. Like, I, it hasn't moved on yet. But I want to encourage us that it is God's desire for every single one of us. And I don't want to make this general. I want to make this personal because I know what's going on in our lives. I know the difficulties. I know the hopes. I know the dreams. I know the struggles. And I want to give you something that God gave to me, which is that he desires for you to go to your dream. He wants you to get there. Not just me, not just Taylor, not just us generally, not just the church, you. And if there is a dream that God has given you and you're like, the kind where you're like, I don't even want to say it because if I say it, I like it's so big, it's, it's so close to my heart, I, I want it so bad. And if I say it, something about that makes it more real. I want to encourage you. It's time to start saying it. God got me yesterday. I was, I was praying with him and I was praying about the church. And I've, I've had this very simple prayer. I said, God, I don't, I don't care what the numbers are. God, just help us love people. You know, just, just help us love every single one that comes in. Good prayer. Not a bad prayer. But then I would subconsciously get a little angry with him. And I'd be like, God, there's only like... 15 of us. What the heck? And he's like, what have you been praying for? God was answering the prayer I was praying. And so I said, okay, God, what are you telling me? And I really felt like he said, okay, well, why don't you pray for more people to love? I think sometimes we get caught up and, and we go, oh, well, I don't want to be prideful or, or, or maybe I'm not ready. And we're not actually praying as though God's promises are true. We're not actually praying that, God, would you come back soon and reward me? God, would you come back and give me this specific dream? We try and be general and call it the word of God. Or, or, or no, it's just the will of the Lord. And so we hide behind generalities and and I don't want to push down on us. I want to excite us that the Lord told me to tell you, you can pray specifically about your future. God, I, I, I want to make this much money. 
pray that number. God, I, I want to see you do this thing in my life. God, I, I, I want to build these kind of relationships. It's really cool. Me and Taylor, we, we uh, had a conversation probably two or three months ago about wanting to uh, begin building friendships uh, with people generally our age in our life. And since then, three different couples have come into our life who are super kind, super loving, have kids, like really, really cool stuff. But we got specific in our prayers. We didn't say, General God, if it's your will that we, like, I think we get that God, if it's your will thing, in a good place, and then we take it and we hide behind it because we don't want our dreams to be crushed. We say, oh, well, if I'm general and it doesn't happen, it's okay because it must be God's will. But if I'm specific and it doesn't happen, that means either God didn't hear me or God didn't care. And I want to encourage us, just like the only way to get emotional healing is to get into community, the only way to get an answer to prayer is to actually pray it. Preach. And, and, and we get afraid of God sometimes because we're like, God, I, you know, we, we, I hear all the time, God, I feel like I've let you down. How about the fact sometimes we feel like God lets us down? What if we leaned into that a little bit and we said, okay, God, I may not understand everything you do, but I'm going to trust you and I'm going to give you the opportunity to let me down. That sounds weird. I'm telling you, God's not going to let you down. But the only way for your walk with the Lord to grow, for there to be healing, for the times you have been let down, is to open your heart back up to the possibility that you might be. Does that make sense? Because, because we have this great lingo, oh, God's never let me down. He's never going to do it. And then we behave differently than those words. And I'm trying to get rid of the words that sound good, but they're not actually accessing your heart. They're not actually opening you up to go, God, I got to be honest. I felt let down. But I am not okay to live in a place where I don't trust you. So I'm going to open myself up again. And God, I want you to speak to that. And I want you to speak to my future. And God, I'm going to share my hopes. God, I'm going to share my dreams. God, I'm going to get specific. A very simple one for me is I have always believed, God, I want to uh, reach hundreds of thousands of people. And, and I mentioned a conversation between me and God earlier. The way that conversation ended is I said, God, I want to read hundreds and thousands. And God said, hundreds of thousands. I believe God wants to get specific. Is it okay if we get a little specific with God for a little bit? We say, God, I want, look, I, I'm not trying to say this is prosperity gospel, but if God has given you a dream to go, God, I want a living room that can house my family. God wants to give you that. Like, it's not like I, I need an $11 million mansion. That's not what I'm saying. But if you're saying, God, I would love a home where my family will always know they're loved and safe. God, I would love a house that, that we can begin hosting people and sit across them at the dinner table and begin to love them like Jesus loved that's a prayer that he wants to answer. And in me and Taylor's life, clearly that's a prayer that he answered. The fact that we're in a house, God just provided it. Like we don't pay the kind of money that we need to to be in a house like this. But we prayed and said, God, we want a house we can sit across the table from people with. God, we want a house we can, we can open up. God, we want a house that we can make an inn where you can bring people who are beaten and bruised and we can take care of them and treat them as though their tab is on you and we will believe for your reward. And all of a sudden, we're in a house that we can do that in. I'm trying to encourage us today. We need to get specific. And we need to really buy in with God and say, God, I want these promises. 
So for the next couple of minutes, uh, 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 Nicole's going to turn on some kind of song. I don't know what she's going to turn on. I didn't warn her about this. But I want us to go to that place with the Lord. And I really have it on my heart that, that we begin praying specific prayers. Last week, I, I had us all kind of break up. And, and we've done similar things before where we write down our goals and dreams. The idea was that we would be getting prepared last week for the things we're going to ask for this week. And so I, I hope that you wrote down some things in there that maybe seem a little bit too big or maybe seem a little bit scary. And, and today, I, I really hope God has been stirring something in your heart, something specific that you can pray for and say, God, I want this business to work. God, I, I, I want to see you move. God, I, I want to be able to come home and not have to worry about everything falling apart if I don't show up the next day. So I'm going to pray, and Nicole's going to turn something on, and for the next two, three, four, five minutes, we're going to pray those specific prayers, and, and, and I'm going to encourage you, get into a position with the Lord where you're comfortable. Don't just like, don't tune out. Lean in to the Lord. And for the next couple minutes, we're going to pray those specific prayers and say, God, these are the dreams. This is what I want to see happen. And, and God, if you have a different dream, like <laughs> that's okay. But I need you to share with me why that dream's better. God, I need you to share with me why that's actually the direction we need to go. Because the truth is, some of us do have ideas in our heads that, that may not be from God. Me and Taylor had ideas that weren't from God when we got married. And then Winter showed up, and she was from God. And we're like, all right, we're going to figure this out. But there are things that are from God, and he wants to give them to you. And if there is anything I want to leave us with, it's this. God is sitting in heaven waiting for you to say the word so that he can give it to you. I've mentioned this before. I'm, I'm going to say it one more time, and I promise I'm done. God is not waiting for you to say it because he doesn't know what it is. He's waiting for you to say it because when you say it, it means you finally recognized that you actually need him. That's why we pray. Not because God doesn't know. It's actually all about us. It's about us coming to the place where I go, I can't do this without him. I do need his help. And when our heart gets to that place, it demands a response. And that response is prayer. That's what prayer is. Prayer is the response to the demand in your soul for God's help. It's saying, God, I cannot do this without you. So if there's something like that, we're going to pray. And if you're just going to sit here and go generally, God, just then just sit here and listen to the song. Be, be, because we're not doing church right. We're, we're not just trying to play along and go, oh, well, this is what Matthew's uh, all excited about this weekend. No, I really believe God wants to bless us. And he wants to do a work in our hearts so that we will begin to believe specifically we will see his hand moving in our life. So God, right now, I just pray, God, and I just ask that you would do something new. And Father God, we believe that you are true and that God, when you speak, it will happen. And so I pray right now, not only God, for the courage to pray, but God, more than anything, that we would partner with you, God, we would open our hearts to you. <laughs> And that whatever is in between us and believing that you want to bless us, you want to reward us, you want to give us the desires that you have put there in the first place, God, I pray that those blocks would be removed. All right. Well. We're going to wrap up uh, like we do every week with testimony time. Um, I hope that you will take some time 
uh, write down the uh, prayers that maybe came to mind today, things that you'll continue to think about and talk with the Lord about. And, and then hopefully in the next several months, we'll start to hear some answers to those prayers. And I really believe that there's just a special moment that God just wants to answer some things. He wants to send some answers. He wants to send some rewards. And, and I would encourage you, pray those things. Don't wait. Don't delay. Pray those things. And even if it's delayed a little bit, you may be in a Daniel situation where it's like 21 days. The enemy's sending everything he's got against your prayer request, but it'll get here because our God does not fail. So with that said, let's talk about some testimonies. What has God been doing in our life the last week, couple weeks that we want to share about? Nice. Hey. Um, I wanted to share, as most of you know, I launched my ministry last week. So pumped. And I just wanted to thank you, Matthew, and, and church, because everything you've been talking about since we started about God doesn't give you a dream to tease you, but because he loves you and he wants to use your pain for purpose. Um, that has literally just, I mean, it's been five years since I came, Alan came up with the name in our kitchen at our old house. And anyways, it's just been a long time and now I've finally done it and I'm so excited and overjoyed. Um, it is a ministry for kids who have parents who are incarcerated or young adults, really anybody, um, who would like help and healing along that journey. Cause my dad was in jail as I was growing up still is. Um, and so I just want to be a hope and a light to that situation. So if you guys ever come across anybody who is in that situation, you can obviously connect them with me or for the little girls like me.com and everything is there. So I was just praying big prayers that God would just grow it. So, um, that so many people can see it. And I watched a video the other day and now it's 1.7 million people are incarcerated in America and it's the highest <laughs> out of anybody. So I'm like, there's that many, there's at least that many kids who are going through the pain that I went through and it's a huge need. And I'm just asking God to connect me to the people to give them love and show them that their pain has purpose. So praise God. Yeah. Quits. All right. Oh. So I went to the uh, man camp a few weeks ago. Um, it's a Christian event put on. It's a, it's a short weekend camping trip. But um, while I was there, one of the things that the Lord spoke to me or really changed in my heart was obviously you guys know that me and Julia lost a baby and. Nicole and Justin just recently and Owen and Sky and, and I know Cody. So everybody in here pretty much has suffered from this at some point in their life as far as we know. But um, point in saying that is I've just been really mad at God for uh, losing that baby. And, you know, it was short and, and it wasn't that long, but just there's a lot of pain and stuff that's gone with it. And I've been kind of frustrated at him. But while I was at the camp, I just felt like the Lord totally shifted my perspective from being mad at him and like wishing that I could have had the baby here to, to looking forward and longing to see, um, that baby in heaven and stuff. And, um, just the joy that that would bring and stuff. And, um, that I felt like while I was there and we were worshiping, it was just a beautiful night and you're out under the stars. And it's very, you know, man type out in the woods kind of thing. Very cool. But we're out there worshiping and stuff. And I just felt like I saw a picture of the F father, God, Jesus, and the Holy spirit holding Rose, Kai and little P and it was uh, pretty special to me. And it really helped me to see that he really cared and he's taking care of them and they're in good hands. So. Not in the clapping mood today, are we? There it is. All right. With that said, let's eat some food. Father God, we come before you. We thank you for this day. We pray that you would bless our meal, God. Help us to just connect with one another, God, just to go to that, that next level of relationship, of depth, God. I just pray that the food would be amazing. 
sing. God, you would bless it to our bodies and bless the name. Amen.